We are here at the Hopkinton Middle School Library today to talk with Diane Norby, who is a librarian here. And we are here to talk about books and rocks and car accidents and life. Hi, Diane. Uh, <laughs> thank you for meeting with me today here. We're here at the Hopkinton Middle School Library. Mm -hmm. and we're surrounded by books, uh, which is one of my favorite places to be. Um, surrounded by books mm -hmm. and I know that of all the possibilities in Hopkinton connected with you, you chose to be interviewed right here in the library where you work every day. I consider this my home to be, uh, my home away from home. Home away so. from home, mm -hmm. well that's a nice way of putting it. And um, how long have you been working here? Um, I'm just finishing up my 14th year here. My goodness, and wow, it, 14. It never gets old. Mm -hmm. Oh, that. Not everybody can say no. that. About in fact, their every job. morning when I walk in, I just feel this little rush of happiness, wow. joy. It just it happens every day I walk in here. Happiness and joy, that's great. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think uh, that's all about? Um, Why happiness well, and joy after 14 years? Well, I think it, the, the profession itself, as, as a librarian, every day is different. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. To be surrounded by this fantastic literature, informational text, and the wonderful community. I mean, I just work with, you know, just students come in and get help from me every time and every day, and it's just, it's always different. So I just enjoy it, and I also enjoy working with the teachers who are fantastic. Oh, that's great to hear. Um, so how did you first get connected to working at this library as well as to Hopkinton? Well, um, our family relocated to um, Massachusetts in about 1993 because my husband um, got an employment in Ashland. And so we were moving from Syracuse, New York, and um, we um, were looking in the surrounding towns, uh, surrounding Ashland. We didn't know too much about the Metro West area. So um, having young children decided to, you know, check out schools as, a, as an entry point into where we should move. And I um, remember um, one very, very warm summer day driving up and parking in front of Center School in Hopkinton and um, decided to uh, um, see what the school looked like because um, I had a five-year-old, a two-year-old, and I was expecting my third child. Ah. So they're in the car with you? So they were yeah. in the car with me and um, we were still all in the car and then um, this woman um, rear-ended us uh -oh. and we went flying. Um, it, really? was, it was a quite uh -huh. a, a big bump. So um, the superintendent at the time was meeting with Mr. Arger and they came flying out of the school checking to see um, were we all right. And they helped me in the back room and gave me water and were so kind to me. Um, mm you know, helped me call my husband who was working um, and um, took care of the children um, that I said after I, you know, it was all done and I was home, uh, we were living in Westboro temporarily, I said, you know what, this is where we're going to move because if you have um, that kind of um, community hmm. um, support and just the warmth, um, I felt like I was part of the community already. So here we are. We wow. moved uh, to Hopkinton and um, uh, we lived here for 20 years oh. until recently downsizing and I moved to uh, another area to be closer to my oldest daughter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but still very much part of Hopkinton. Oh, very community. much part of Hopkinton. I just, yeah. I feel as though I'm part of Hopkinton and not my new community, so mm -hmm. I still feel allegiance here. Mm -hmm. That's great, and that's quite a story, not your conventional way of getting into a job or a community, right, mm -hmm. by a car accident, but uh, praise be for Mr. Arger also, right? Exactly. <laughs> that's a wonderful, beloved principal back in time, and that's, Truly. A, that's a sweet story to hear how you got connected to the schools. And so you went right to the library here? Oh, no, no. I um, I was in between. I, uh, this, I was not trained as a librarian. Oh, um, okay. My first profession was medical technology to be. Uh -huh. Uh, to be honest about it. And um, I did work as a med tech. For those of you, you know, who don't know what a med tech is, it's um, a clinical laboratory scientist. Mm -hmm. um, I got my bachelor's degree and worked for five years at Maine Medical Center. Maine? Maine, mm -hmm. where I'm from. Okay. 
And where um, in Maine you're from? Yeah, I'm from Biddeford. Biddeford, Biddeford okay, Maine. by yep. the ocean. Yes, mm -hmm. grew up right on the ocean. Mm -hmm. So then you were lab tech over in Maine? In Maine mm -hmm. for five years. I worked in blood banking and I worked in microbiology. And then I just got the urge to just do something else. So I went to the University of Vermont to get my master's in med tech with a concentration in education. Because I really enjoyed um, teaching the um, med tech students who were seniors and you had to do a clinical rotation. You have a year of internship. Uh -huh. and so I loved um, teaching the seniors who would come and rotate through the labs and um, I found that I really um, could give a lot to them uh -huh. um, in terms of making things easier for them, explaining things and just kind of nurturing them. So uh -huh. I got a master's in it and um, ended up teaching at the University of Vermont. They um, invited me to stay to um, um, help fill a gap because one of the professors was taking a, a year-long sabbatical. Uh, so I stayed and I taught my own microbiology wow, class. Wow, microbiology professor. Yes, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, both lab and lecture. Mm -hmm. And I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot and it was just fun. Mm -hmm. I could really connect with the small groups. And, uh, yeah. and that's it? University of Vermont, did yes, you say? Yeah. Yes, Which is quite uh, an exciting large campus uh, it was. for it was. Um, looking at uh, science and microbiology mm -hmm. in that community. Wow, well that, that's an exciting uh, direction. And then from there? From there, I, I, well, I was ending in a year, so I had to find employment to pay my bills. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I ended up um, accepting a position in um, as an assistant professor in medical technology at the SUNY uh, Health Science Center, which is the State University of New York uh -huh. Upstate Medical Center in Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And so I taught, that was a tenure track, so it was uh, quite involved with yes. research and different <laughs> activities. I taught um, there for a few years. Mm -hmm. I taught clinical blood banking. And um, I loved it because, again, you had the small, uh, class sizes, uh, but I also, as part of the requirement, you, I had to work in the blood bank um, to get practical experience, to keep my experience. Okay, what's a blood bank? Blood bank is where um, um, blood is typed, cross-matched, and um, tested for compatibility with um, transfusion recipients. Okay. So it was kind of high-powered, kind of um, mm. stressful. Yes, um, a lot of responsibility. Right, mm -hmm. and, um, and I taught um, medical students and um, pathology residents too. How so interesting. I enjoyed um, the interaction. Mm -hmm. mm. So then from medical students and uh, then next was it middle school students? <laughs> well I took another break. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's another, another gap there. <laughs> I, um, I decided that um, my husband was then relocated and we moved to, um, uh, we had to leave Syracuse so I thought long and hard about it and decided that I wanted to stay home full time because at that point I had two small children mm -hmm. and um, another one on the way and um, so I figured we would just, um, I'd stay home and be a full time mom and then, and then figure things out later because mm -hmm. that was very important to me was to be right. home and, and to, um, to, you know, help my children and watch them grow. a full time grow. job. Full time job, yep. Mm -hmm. So that shifted things for you? Uh, it did. Career wise. It did. Um, not having worked in the state of uh, Massachusetts and then not really wanting to commute to Boston, um, I decided to just start looking at other alternatives. And when my youngest one, uh, my youngest child, entered first grade, I said, okay, now it's time for me to play. What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. So the only thing that was um, a viable option when I was looking was to become an assistant librarian in a middle school in Natick. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, I like books. We'll give it a whirl. Aha, uh -huh. yeah. And I ended up loving it so much um, that I decided to get another master's and became certified to, um, to, to take over uh, my own library. Wow. And then at the same time, fortuitously, was the year that the middle school split up um, with the high school. Mm -hmm. So the high school moved out of this area, this this room. You know, this used to be a middle. Here, physically. Yes, this okay. was a middle mm -hmm. and high school mm -hmm. library. And um, when they split off and went to the other building, uh, they 
needed a middle school librarian. So mm -hmm. perfect timing. Timing wow. was everything. How about and, that? Um, You've been so, here not 14 years since then. The end of 14 years, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's quite a path. <laughs> and it's really <laughs> funny because my two younger children were on IEPs growing up, and I would attend speak meetings in this mm -hmm. in this room, and I would um, just come in and just take the ambiance in, and I was just looking around going, I, I felt a certain sense of peace when wow. I was in this building. Uh -huh. And that was in the mid to late 90s. And All I said, right. oh, this is just an absolutely wonderful, wonderful room. Before you were Before I even the, here to work. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't, Isn't that I, interesting? I started here in 2001. Mm -hmm. well, uh, when you were a child, uh, you grew up in New York? I grew up in Maine. Oh, Maine. I'm sorry. That's yeah. right. No, that's and, okay. And um, would you say that you had any um, inclination to uh, be spending a lot of time with books then uh, that led to the future love and eventual work with books? Uh, was, was it a destiny yes. for you, do you think? I, I <laughs> guess so. I would have never thought of it at yeah. the time, but um, I had an insatiable desire to learn about everything. and. Um, I would pack my school bag with all my books for a vacation and I would, with the, with the intention of reading ahead and just yeah. satisfying my curiosity about everything. My early, um, re really early recollections was getting to walk downtown or take the bus with my aunt who lived with us and we would go to the library on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. And um, I still remember my library card number from, I, I don't want to date myself, but I'll, I'll say it's, it's pretty pretty long time ago. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, <clears throat> we would go down there and I would pick out books. And to me, that, that was the happiest time when I could walk mm. out with the books and I would read, read, read all the time. Mm. Wow, well, that's uh, some of your happiest moments. It uh, sounds like back in time. Yeah. And it's interesting how you say you can learn about everything in a library mm -hmm. there. You're not limited to a certain uh, subject. No. Huh. And do you have uh, any all-time favorite book? Uh, oh. Is that a hard question? <laughs> no. <laughs> no? <laughs> well, my, as a child, I, I read the Nancy Drew books. The Nancy Drew books. Yeah, I remember really. walking to Grant's um, to get the latest book, and I was... Uh, they were 99 cents, wow. the hardcover. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> the new release, 99 cents, 99 Nancy cents. Drew. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I had ended up collecting all of them, so I have all of the originals. You still have them? I still have ah. them. A library of your own? I, well, as a matter of fact, it's, it's in construction as we speak. Oh, um, uh -huh. My youngest child is leaving home. And oh, so he's it's helped him make a library. <laughs> I've already kicked him out of his bedroom. He's oh. had to leave oh, too, wow. and he's building <laughs> me a, a library. Wow, what a great gift! Uh, yes. uh, as uh, exiting home. Yes. Right. Yes. <laughs> oh, he'll always have a place to stay, but mm -hmm. his parting gift to me will be a new library. <laughs> ah, how wonderful! And uh, do you have any certain uh, type of? Uh, topics, especially in books that you collect and, and love to read? Oh, I, I have so many. Um, people would say I'm a little bit scattered to, to hear of my, um, my great love for so many different things. I love mysteries. Mm -hmm. I love anything to do with spy novels um, or facts. Right now I'm reading a book, Double Agent, mm -hmm. uh, by Peter, ooh, what's the name? Peter Duffy. Okay. Uh -huh. And um, it's about the um, World War II and um, the, f the very first uh, double agent to, uh, he was uh, one instrumental in um, uh, circumventing the Nazi spy uh, mm -hmm. circles. Mm -hmm. So they broke that. Um, and it's fascinating. I just love all the gadgets that mm -hmm. they use and the, the element of danger. Uh huh. And so I like adventure. You I love spy when you open the book there. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and I'm a slow reader because I really get so involved in the reading mm -hmm. um, that I just um, I, it, I'm transported. Mm. Um, I can almost smell and taste and wow. touch everything. You are making me want to go home and read a book <laughs> well, right now, good. actually, by saying <laughs> that. But what do you think about um, present day society and um, 
our generation of children and children to be, you know, mm -hmm. do you think that there's going to be a shift in the interest of reading books? Do you see that now or do you anticipate that in the future? Uh, will we always have books that you can hold in your hand? Um, you know, are we going to have to resign ourselves to Kindle or some sort of cyber little book? I don't know. Any any future uh, thoughts or, or even oh, present observations? We can't. We cannot. Maybe ever. one. <laughs> yeah. we, we can't ever say goodbye to print yeah. books. Um, uh -huh. There's something about holding a book that the experience, I think, is, is uh, it's too great to, mm -hmm. um, to let go of. Um, kids nowadays, you know, they love the Kindle, but it's been proven. Um, there are studies that have proven that um, the experience in reading a digital copy of a book is not the same. You get the content, uh -huh. uh, but you just don't have the same experience. It's a different way, uh, different lesson um, taken out of it. So, in fact, that's one of my um, um, things that I'm really looking into. I, I, I'm investigating how different is it. What, what's how do you read oh, um, a print versus a um, an electronic copy? And there are very very different ways of teaching reading skills uh, um, to uh, if to those using um, Kindles and other devices. So, are you doing an informal uh, research study? Um, I've or? I've done kind of a, like a literature review, okay. and I've mm -hmm. pulled out um, for a class that I took. Um, but I, and I've pulled out some ideas, so now, um, it, you know, it's not inconceivable that I would look into it and do my own study in, in the fall. That would be really interesting mm -hmm. to hear and important, I think. Um, I'm with you uh, and want to see books around as long as I am, at least, and I would, I would hope that for the future. So uh, it seems like it's a really uh, key role that you play w mm -hmm. as we transition to more technology uh, as exactly. resources. So books, your love of books, uh, what else don't we know about you? Oh. In, in this life uh, that you live uh, and these different interesting jobs as well as raising uh, three children three who children. are now all grown all and grown. off on their um, own. I just lost, well, I won't say I lost the two last two. The last two just flew the coop. They flew the coop. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan is, is in the process of, he's leaving in three weeks to go to Florida because wow. he just graduated from college and he's the last one to go. Um, so he's got a job working for electronic arts. Um, they tell me it's a big um, uh, uh, software engineering company for video games. Ah, okay. So he's working on the Madden mobile team. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. And then Erica, just who graduated last year, um, left three weeks ago to go to Washington, D.C. Is she going to be a spy? No, <laughs> I would love to follow her though. <laughs> Spy Museum. <laughs> um, she's going to. Uh, she was. She got. She graduated with a degree in biochemistry. Uh -huh. So she just got a job at the Walter Reed Army mm -hmm. uh, Research Institute wow, doing great. virology research there. So. Well, it sounds like your children are following in your footsteps and doing different and interesting and important work in the world, um, including your role as. Um, Staying stay-at-home mother with them to mm -hmm. guide them. Do you have any uh, advice for um, getting parents, influencing parents to get their kids to love to read uh, these days? Just from what you've observed, reading uh, with with the children is really important. Just spending having time books, reading with them, having books around, and I think, mm -hmm. especially when they're young, being able to look at pictures. Um, I still have some of the books that I remember. Um, looking at when I was like one or two years old. Um, this is a special bird book that was this bird that I loved looking at and, I, and I've kept the book. Um, and um, so I think, in that, and that's, that's a testament to print versus mm -hmm. digital. And you don't, can't yeah. see that as well with the digital copy, but um, just having books mm -hmm. for children to look at mm -hmm. and um, reading as much as possible. Mm -hmm. With reading them, to them, to them. with them, and making the book come alive. Ah, that's great advice. And how about uh, in working with middle school students here, um, what would you say, you know, we often talk about how uh, the adults and the staff teach the children. What would you say that 
the middle school age students who come here, what have they taught you? Maybe if you could think of one. Oh, they've taught me to keep given. current, never current. to stay still. Okay. They keep me on my toes. Ah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. Well, that is a good lesson to learn. Be a step right. ahead of them because they uh -huh. know so much. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> as far yeah. as um, being exposed to worldly um, things, you know, social media, mm -hmm. um, technology. Mm -hmm. um, and what uh, uh, what do the middle school years? Uh, what are favorite things to read? Oh my goodness! Um, well, a lot of the fantasy, uh, fantasy okay. dystopias. Um, it's funny that. Uh, uh, teachers will recommend something. Like I had an English teacher recommend Jules Verne, and then all of a sudden I had a steady stream of, of students coming ah. in for anything Jules Verne. Ah. So, um, so uh, teachers have an influence, even with influence. classics, not yes. necessarily contemporary uh, books. So that that's good news. It's really uh, exciting, and I love them, working so. with teachers to suggest um, extensions for their classroom uh, novels. Um, mm. I just did that with another teacher who um, was reading, um, you know, they are all, the seventh grade was reading Mark Twain, oh, uh, yeah. Tom Sawyer. And um, so I, I have collected a lot of different books um, to provide background on the times, um, Life on the Mississippi and uh, other things. There's some wonderful books um, mm -hmm. written about Tom Sawyer. There's a picture book written about um, him in the eyes of his daughter. Wow, interesting. Yeah. It's huh. really interesting. So I um, have all this array of wonderful material, and I and I push it mm -hmm. onto teachers and good yes. and help them stre strengthen their curriculum. Uh -huh. Yeah, I would see how that would indeed be helpful, and mm -hmm. not just to be talking from the text right. and having the text be spit back, but to make it be meaningful and come alive. Mm -hmm. So um, what an important role that is. Mm -hmm. I'm, I feel privileged. Yeah. Well, uh, and. Likewise, I think the school does um, with your work. Uh, all right, back to what we don't know about you. Oh, what you don't know. <laughs> oh, there's so much. Well, this um, summer, I'm going to teach myself how to play the violin. Wow. Which has been a passion of mine since about five. I've always wanted to learn to play the violin. Mm -hmm. And so this is my year. Where will you learn this? I'm going to learn it at home. and um, Teaching yourself? Teaching myself. Wow. Uh-huh. My son tells me there's lots of YouTube videos out yes. there to uh -huh. help me. I've bought a book, though. I have to have a book to ground me. Uh huh. <laughs> and, well, uh, maybe um, so I'm going to do it. Well, that is exciting. You'll have mm -hmm. to uh, keep us posted. Maybe, maybe I'll serenade be... you in the fall. That's right. <laughs> that would be great. You come out to HCAM Studios and play That's the violin right. for us. That's right. <laughs> All right, and, and I do. I also collect rocks. You collect and minerals, rocks. Yes, since I was about six. Wow, oh, what got that started? I think my father took me. I used to accompany him to the morning uh, Saturday morning hardware store runs, mm -hmm. and in this hardware store, there was I saw I saw a kit, uh, rocks and minerals, um, uh, yeah. for beginners, mm -hmm. and I wanted that kit, and it was two dollars and sixty five cents. And um, a lot of money back then. It was a lot of money. Yeah. And so he relented. He bought me the kit. And I remember it was in, well, I don't want to say what year, but it was very a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I still have it. Oh, I still wow. have that kit. Uh -huh. And that's what started, uh -huh. started me. Um, I be became really passionate about the different colors. There's something about the colors, the composition, the chemical composition. So I was able to satiate my, you know, my love for um, art, um, mm -hmm. yeah. collector of art and the different colors and the chemical um, ah, makeup yes. of each thing. Mm -hmm. So there's my science mm -hmm. and geography because they're found, I have now about 350 different specimens from all over the world, including wow. Russia and... Did you go there or oh, did no, you, I, you I, purchase I purchased them? them. Yeah. And then do you uh, display them or attend conferences? I did attend conferences um, up until recently. I just other things have crowded me, um, taken my time. So, who knows? Um, wow. I have a lot, um, a lot of uh, years left, and maybe I'll start going to conferences again. Uh huh. Wow. And uh, you climb mountains in I your do. spare time, right? I climb mountains. I have um, 
started uh, well a few years ago as a family we would um, we were trying to climb every summit of every st the highest summit of every state wow. uh -huh. um, so we've we've made it to about well we've kind of all taken different different uh, pathways yeah. at this point but I think I made it up to um, 19 of them so wow my mm -hmm. goodness well, congratulations. Uh, that's no small achievement there. That's uh, impressive. So keep going. Oh, I'm slowing down in my old <laughs> age, but. <laughs> well, I, ne I never is give good up, though. I never give up. Never good up, give up never is a good up. philosophy. And uh, anything else on your, your, you're covering a lot. And, uh, you know, we, I th we did have the conversation how being in the library, you get to um, help influence and also be a part of loving to learn about so many different things mm -hmm. in the world, which it seems that is part of who you are. Uh, and we're just uh, getting a little bit of that information in these 26 minutes. Um, and uh, from what I understand, there's a lot more uh, that you have been interested in, but um, what a great place to land by accident and uh, mm -hmm. the circumstances mm -hmm. in this place where uh, there is all kinds of information from an array of books that you help to select and influence young lives uh, to read also. Mm -hmm. So anything else on your bucket list at this point? Um, I want to travel. Um, I'm in the process of um, now that children are starting, well, grown in, in their own direction, I can have a lot of uh, latitude to be able to travel. Uh, okay. What's what's where would you like to go most in the world? Oh my goodness! If well, you I've had already your... been. I've been to Thailand, and Thailand. I've been to Italy uh -huh. and France and uh, Australia. Uh -huh. I think uh -huh. the Scandinavian countries are next. They're next. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that sounds like a good destination for you. And uh, I, it's hard to believe, but we've already run out of time on our interview. Are you <laughs> serious? <laughs> This went very fast. <laughs> so, but uh, it's wonderful to get to know a little bit about you today. And thank you for the great work that you do on behalf of Hopkinton, our community, and the students who come here. Thank you. It was a pleasure, Cheryl. I really appreciate the opportunity well, as well. Thank you so much. And, and have a nice, restful uh, summer vacation and enjoy your violin. Thank you. <laughs> okay. All right.